Hi everyone, this is the video, um, well part one of the video for organic chemistry. Uh, we just finished up the Chem 111 review and now we're going to be moving into the learning outcomes for this unit. So for here we're going to really be looking at uh, organic structures and just beginning we're going to start with classifying them. Uh, we are going to have quite a bit of naming and drawing of those structures. We're going to deal a little bit with structural isomers and stereoisomers, and we're going to get into the properties of all these classifications of compounds. Now, if you think back to Unit 2 and 111, the nomenclature, the classification of those compounds was pretty massive. This is the same kind of unit here. It's a bit unwieldy, but it's a really rewarding unit. And so just kind of hit pause when you need to, use your flashcards if you need to. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun regardless of what you're told. So we just did the intro to 111. Remember that we're going to be dealing with those Lewis structures. Here we're going to be dealing with covalent bonds, um, mostly polar covalent and non-polar. Um, so just kind of keep those theories in mind. And then we'll be dealing with carbon, the geometry around carbon, which can form up to four bonds. So for this video, I didn't want to get but so long. And so we're really going to be focusing on, well, I didn't mean to cross that off, uh, A to C. And so we're going to start in with what is organic chemistry? What is a functional group? And then we're going to get into what kind of how do we draw those structures? And then we're going to talk about hydrocarbons. So um, organic chemistry is just the study of molecules containing carbon. We are carbon-based life forms. Carbon is amazing because of its bond versatility. Um, even carbon bonding to carbon has so many f arrangements. Um, carbon bonded one direction with itself. Um, it forms these plates that will uh, slide and be really kind of um, a good lubricant almost. And that's the graphite lead that you're using in your pencil. Um, another way that it bonds, um, and I don't, mm, let's kind of go like this. Um, what happens is you form a very uh, hard three-dimensional structure and, you know, it ends up being the equivalent of the diamond that, you know, is so popular for engagement rings now. Um, and then and it, there's other types of bonds that carbon can do just to, to itself. Um, one in particular is used for medical applications. It basically forms um, the equivalent of like a carbon soccer ball almost. It's got an empty structure inside and um, it's called buckyball. But you can actually put medication in it and a signal molecule on the outside and send it to a specific part of the body. It's really interesting. So carbon has all of these great flexibilities with bonds. It's able to do so many different things. It has so many unique um, attributes. And so we have all of these uh, classifications of organic compounds that are possible. Now, carbon is one of the most abundant elements um, in the universe, uh, which is probably why we can have so much of it in us. Um, and then there's also the carbon cycle that you would get into if you were taking biology. But there's a ton of different ways that carbon is important here. Now, we can have carbon bonded to carbon. We can have all kinds of other molecules in there. But we need to talk about the specific functional group. Now, a functional group is just a group of atoms that's going to be attached to an organic molecule. Usually, it's going to be along the backbone. And it is going to have a specific set of properties. Um, it's going to give, you know, either a polarity, a reactivity. It's going to give something unique. Now, the carbon backbone um, is really, it's abbreviated as R a lot of the time. So like an alcohol would be abbreviated as ROH. And um, this just means some carbon chain. That's all it means. R is some carbon chain. 
Now, functional groups have different properties. They can be polar, like this hydroxyl or alcohol group. They can be nonpolar, like this, you know, alkyl methyl group here. Um, they can have uh, specific orientations and reactivity, like a carbonyl carbon, which is just carbon double bonded to an oxygen. They can have a car, you know, it's a series of atoms that gives a lot of properties. Now, we're going to be getting into um, most of these and then some um, as we move into organic chemistry. But just be aware that functional group means a group of atoms that gives it a specific um, set of properties, you know. So with that in mind... So for an organic molecule, the base is always going to be carbon. Now, we can't just talk about the molecular formula the way we do in 111. So if you consider here 2-methylbutane and 2,2-dimethylpropane, if we count these up, I'm just going to count carbons first. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Huh. If we look at the hydrogens, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. They have the same molecular formula. And what that really means is we can't tell anything from the molecular formula. How do you know what they're bonded like? And so we have to come up with a different way of discussing organic structures. You can't just say, oh, it's C5H12. No. There's a ton of structural isomers that could be here. And a structural isomer just means it has the same number of each type of atom, but they're arranged in different structures. You know, this is not going to have the same properties as over here. This is a more condensed molecule. It's going to have a little bit more bulky structure, probably a little less reactivity, whereas this is going to be um, a little bit more open down here to substitution and other reactions. So for organic structures, we are going to depict them in three different ways. Now, um, there are a couple of different things that I need to say here. Um, and the con expanded or complete formula is when you draw out every single bond. You notice even the hydrogens are really drawn in. It does not show bond angles because remember, carbon <coughs> excuse me, has four areas, which means these bond angles are actually 109 degrees. Um, it's not the 90 that is being depicted here, but it does show every bond drawn out. Okay. Now, the condensed structure. Now, this is one way of doing condensed. The way that we typically do in lab is we actually draw it in a, um, a like a line. And so like here, the way that you do condensed is, oh, this carbon is attached to three hydrogens. So it's CH3, which is then bonded to this carbon, which is bonded to hydrogen. But hey, it's also bonded, and I'm going to put parentheses because it means above or below, CH3. Then this carbon is bonded to this, this carbon, which has a hydrogen, and then a CH2, CH3. Then it's bonded to this carbon, which has two hydrogens attached, which is bonded to this carbon, which has two hydrogens attached, and then this one, which is CH3. And so you do it kind of as just the backbone with parentheses above and below, okay, if there's more. So condensed can mean either this or this, um, and so just kind of be aware of that. And then skeletal or line angle, I typically call it line angle. Um, I'm, I'm old school. The new version is, oh, it's a skeletal structure. Okay, well, you know, whatever. Um, you draw only the carbons. Everywhere that a, there's a, you know, end is where a carbon is. And you assume that the carbons are filled in with hydrogen, okay? And so this is going to be easier to see later on. 
But like if I were going to draw this, I can see I'm just going to draw. This is going to be my backbone, okay? So C bonded to C, bonded to C, bonded to this C, bonded to this one, and bonded to that one. Oops. Erase. There we go. Now, I can see that I have another carbon up here and then two carbons down here, one right here, one right here. And then what you do at that point is you go back in and you fill them all in with hydrogens. Because carbon has to have um, four bonds, this carbon has one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, kind of like this. And you get the hang of it, but you can kind of see drawing hydrogens can be um, a bit tedious, I'm going to go with. Ah. And it also takes up a lot of room. And so the line angle is really kind of my preferred method just because you get a lot of information out of there. So the, you do not draw hydrogens in um, the line angle or the skeletal structure. You draw everything else though, okay? So you would draw like a chlorine or an oxygen. You just do not draw um, hydrogens. Now the other thing here, um, bond angles are still not exactly correct, but there's a little bit more implication here. Um, so like, you know, this bond angle looks more like 120, even though it's probably right at 109, um, but it's, you know, closer. So as we start talking about uh, organic compounds, let's start with the simplest, which is the hydrocarbon. Hydro meaning hydrogen, carbon meaning, you know, carbon. Um, so hydrocarbons contain only hydrogen and carbon. Now if you have only single bonds, it's called an alkane. Um, if you have double or triple bonds, the ending changes. So an alkene means there's a double bond and an alkyne means that there is a triple bond, okay? And so we're going to get a lot of information just based off those names. Now alkanes, all single bonds, um, have the formula CnH2n plus 2. Um, if that doesn't help you at all, um, just kind of, you know, do your carbon chain and then fill it in with hydrogens. So these are all going to be sp3 hybridized. Um, this carbon has one, two, three, four bonds. 1s, 3p orbitals are involved there. This carbon, one, two, three, four, all sp3 hybridized, okay? So this is octane, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oct meaning eight, so there's eight carbons in that long chain. Ane meaning all single bonds. Now the way that we name these is you're going to find the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. It is not going to be left to right all the time. I'm going to say it again. It is not going to be left to right. It is the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. Okay. Now, for our purposes, um, we are going to use a prefix to indicate what number is in that longest chain. If it's only one carbon, it's a meth. Two is eth, three is prop, four is bute, five, six, seven, and eight make more sense. Pent Agon has five sides, hex has six, hept is seven, and eight is oct. Nine is actually non, um, but we don't usually go up that high. Now, if you take truly, if you truly take organic chemistry, uh, you go up quite a bit higher than eight, but th we're not doing that. Now, once you have the longest chain of carbons, you're going to identify the type of organic molecule and you're going to specify it using the right suffix. So for alkanes, which is what we're talking about now, um, the molecular name is going to end with A and E. If there's more than just um, a straight chain, you also have to specify where those molecules, what those substituents, what those bonds are. And so you're going to say the type of atom or atoms that are bonded. 
you're going to talk about the number of them, and you're going to talk about um, the position of them on those that carbon chain. Okay. So if there's an alkyl substituent, meaning only carbon and hydrogen, you take the prefix and you add an il. So a one carbon group would be a methyl group. So a CH3 would be a methyl group. Then what you're going to do is if there's more than one, you can attach a prefix to indicate how many. So like if there's two of them, it would be di. If there's three of them, there's tr tri. Four is tetra and so on. Now you want to number the carbons so that they're at the smallest or the lowest position possible. And that has to do a little bit with priority, um, but also with the fact that that way when we're talking here versus to somebody in, you know, Australia, we know we're talking about the same organization. So then to put the, it all together in a name, what you're going to do is you're going to list the substituents in alphabetical order, not by prefix, not by anything else, but in alphabetical order. You're going to specify the position using a number. You're going to give a prefix if more than one of them is present. And you're going to give um, the prefix indicating the longest chain of the carbon atom and the right suffix to tell us what kind of compound it is. So let's just deal with um, some alkanes first. So here we have some uh, alkanes. This is CH4. We could draw it, you know, like this. We could also draw it, if we were going to do the skeletal, it would just be a dot, you know. Um, this is one carbon group. One carbon is the chain. So it's meth. There's only single bonds because hydrogen can only have a single bond. So this is methane. Again, guys, if you've never done this, um, if you've never been in one of my classes, please pause and try this on your own. Struggle through it a little bit and then hit play and we can do it together. This is a two carbon group, two carbon chain. So the prefix here is eth. I only see single bonds, nothing but hydrogen bonded. So it's going to be ethane. One, two, three. This is propane. One, two, three, four. This is butane. One, two, three, four, five carbons. This is pentane. Now this is a nice easy slide because I've given it to you like nothing else is here. Um, but know that it's not always left to right that you count. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is hexane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is heptane. All single bonds. There we go. Now, here we have um, a little bit more complicated molecules. We've got some alkyl substituents. And so I'm going to be a little difficult here. I'm going to show you how you can count differently. Um, so like, I'm going to do this one. If I counted one, two, three, that's probably not the longest chain. I can count one, two, three, four, five. That might be it. Or one, two, three, four, five. Either way. I'm actually going to do it this way. Okay. So my longest chain is five, which means I've got a pent. All single bond, so I've got an ane. It's going to be an alkane. Now I've got this substituent bonded here. This is a one carbon group, so it's a methyl group. Now I can either say that that methyl group is at one, two, three, four, five. So it's either going to be at the four or one, two, three, four, five. And we want to put it at the lowest number. So I'm going to count from down here over and I'm going to make this 2-methylpentane. Dash there, all one word. I'm trying to be consistent since you guys have quizzes, and I want you to see how that um, 
numbering is going to be, how the listing of names is going to be. I don't know why I can't get rid of that line. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, well, you get the idea there. Um, now, for this one, um, there's a lot of ways to count. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So that's not going to work. Why is this not working? There it goes. Uh, let's go here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That might be it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's still eight. Oops. Now, guys, you can kind of see that I'm doing this just to kind of show you counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Either way, um, I'm getting eight, so it probably doesn't matter how we do it. So just to be difficult, I'm going to go in this direction, and that's going to be my longest chain, which is an oct. I only see single bonds, so it's an ain. Now, I have a substituent here. I have a methyl group. I have a two-carbon group here and a two-carbon group here. So I have ethyl groups, but because there's two, I'm going to add di. So it's going to be diethyl. Now I need to find my positions. So I can either count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 3 and 7 and 7. Or I can count from this end 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, um, eth hold on, all right, let me, diethyl, okay, so it's either going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, sorry, I can't count, so it's either going to be 3, four, um, and then a 6, and a 6. Or, if you count from the other side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, it would be 3, 3, 6, oops, 3, 3, and a 6. So there's either going to be two 6s or two 3s. You want to go with the lowest combination. And so this is going to be 3-methyl, three 3-6-diethyl. Three and we're going to put these in alphabetical order. So E comes before M. So this is going to be 3 comma 6 dash diethyl dash 3 dash methyl octane. Okay. So we chose the lowest combination of numbers. We put the substituents in alphabetical order. E comes before M. Prefix meaning longest chain, suffix meaning all single bonds. So now go ahead and hit pause and try to draw the expanded structure for um, combined, I'm sorry, expanded condensed and line angle for 2,3-dimethylbutane, 3,4-diethyl-2-methyloctane, and yeah. All right, so at this point, I'm going to assume that you have done that. I'm going to do expanded first. Butane means um, four. So one, two, three, four. All single bonds, so there's all single bonds here. Two, three, dimethyl. So on this carbon, one, two. And on this carbon, I'm going to have a methyl group. Now I'm just going to fill in so that each carbon has four bonds, and I'm going to fill in my hydrogens. H, 
H H Okay, now the condensed structure, I'm going to use a highlighter. Let's just talk about this carbon first. This carbon is CH3, which is then bonded to this carbon, which is CH with a CH3 group above. So I'm going to use parentheses there. Now this carbon is also bonded to this carbon, which is bonded to a hydrogen and has a CH3 group above. And then that's bonded to a CH3. Now, if I were going to do line angle, line angle is my favorite. I'm just going to indicate the number of carbons. What? Goodness gracious. What? There's got to be something I'm doing. Um, one, one, two, three, four carbons, and then I have a methyl group there and there. Okay, so three, four, diethyl, two, methyl, octane. I'm going to start again with this longest chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's going to be a lot of hydrogens here. Now, on the third carbon, I'm going to do a diethyl. I mean, on the third carbon, I'm going to do an ethyl. And on the fourth carbon, I'm going to do an ethyl. And on the second carbon, I'm going to come back and do a methyl. Actually, I'm going to do that one down just for space reasons. Now, at this point, I've got my things there. All I have to do is fill in my hydrogens. Each carbon is going to have four bonds total. Hi, Den Hush. You're fine, dude. Oops. So that is the complete structure. And you can kind of see it's unwieldy. Like, I would not want to deal with that very much. Um, but, you know, okay. So let's go ahead and do the condensed. Um, same thing. I'm going to go ahead and highlight each one of these really quick um, so you can kind of see where this is going. So I'm going to have this carbon that I'm going to talk about, and then I'm going to talk about this carbon, and then I'm going to talk about this one, which has this group above. Then I'm going to talk about this one, which has that group below. Then this one. then this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so now if I'm going to talk about these, I can say that this is CH3, CH with a methyl group down here, so CH3 in parentheses, then a CH with a CH2, CH3 group, Oh my goodness, I'm out of room. Hmm. I'm going to write it up across the top. I want it to be all in one line. Okay, so it's going to be CH3. Then it's a CH with a methyl group in parentheses. Then it's a CH with a CH2, CH3 group in parentheses. Then it's a CH with another ethyl group, so CH2, CH3. Then I have CH, CH2, 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 and then a CH3. And you can kind of see that's still kind of large. 
So my favorite is the skeletal. I'm going to go ahead and do that over here. So I have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. On the third one, I have um, an ethyl, so that's two. One, two. On the fourth one, I have an ethyl. One, two. That works. And then on the two, I have a methyl. And that is a good line structure. Um, yeah. Now, alkanes are kind of unique in that they have, um, they're all nonpolar. <coughs> so they're not going to be soluble in water. They're all nonpolar. They're kind of, <coughs> sorry, oily. They have a low density. Um, they're going to have low boiling points. The only thing that's going to increase the boiling point is the bigger they get, the higher the, mol the, um, the boiling point goes. So like methane, ethane, those tend to be um, gases. Um, usually um, by the time you get to like a butane, butane is, you know, they can pressurize it in those lighters to make a liquid. But usually pentane is the one that's a liquid um, by itself. You don't have to force the issue. And then usually around the time you get to the 12 or um, 15 carbon range, that's when they typically are solids. Um, because these are all carbon-hydrogen bonds, carbon-hydrogen has very similar electronegativity. They're going to be nonpolar. They're also going to be relatively stable. Okay. Now, because they are stable, they're generally not very reactive. Um, they can combust. We do burn them all the time for combustion engines. Um, you get a ton of energy from these molecules. There is really um, nothing else in existence right now where we can get that much energy per molecule and we can uh, siphon it. You know, nuclear reactions, the efficiency is so low for what we can gather. It's, it, there's nothing that compares to these. Now, um, combustion just means burning in the presence of oxygen. You're going to make CO2 and water vapor. Cracking means you have these really long chains. That's really not a very good one especially from like, um, you know, the, the pure bio uh, oil that you, you pull up. And then thermocracking means you just kind of break them into more usable sizes um, for something like octane or, you know, for your car, that kind of thing. They will go and undergo substitution reactions where you can take a hydrogen off and replace it with something else like chlorine. Um, halogens are great for this. They will really um, replace hydrogens pretty well. Dehydrogenation means you take two hydrogens off, you make a double bond. Um, that's going to be an alkene that we talk about in a few minutes. And the other thing you can do is you can oxidate, oxidize them by adding in oxygen. Okay, and we're going to talk about this um, in the next video after we've gone through a lot of the, um, the classification of compounds. It's just easier to see after we've done some. So alkenes are going to have a double bond. Nomenclature is exactly the same as with alke alkanes. The only difference is that A changes to an E. And so guys, for a lot of the things here, um, spelling is super important. You know, one letter difference um, means a whole different type of bond, a whole different type of molecule. So we have to specify the location of the double bond if it's not understood. So like ethene, we don't have to specify because it can only be on the first carbon. Um, propene, same thing. It can only be on the first carbon. Um, one, two, three. You don't name it here. Um, 1,3-butadiene, here we're specifying that on the first carbon and the third carbon, there are two, meaning di, um, double bonds. Now, we are going to draw the expanded, condensed, and line angle structure for these. 
if you are, um, as you're doing this at home, go ahead and hit pause just so you can practice this on your own. Okay, so hopefully you have tried this and there it goes. And now we're going to do this um, together. Hex one in. Um, sometimes it's also like one hexene. I'm trying to be consistent the way that you're seeing it in your book, the way you're going to see it in um, quizzes and so on. So hexene, I'm going to do hexene and then we're going to um, erase and do the next one, okay? So I'm going to do line angle first. I just really prefer it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Double bond on the first carbon, kind of like that. Condensed um, is usually easier after you do the expanded. So I'm going to go ahead and do expanded here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Double bond is at that first position. Now I can come back and put in my hydrogens. This carbon has two bonds, three, four. Oops. One, two, three, only needs one. Okay, so we could now draw this as the condensed um, CH2. Usually you don't have to specify, sometimes you'll see it drawn, but you don't need to specify the double bond because it's the only way that that could exist. CH2, 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 and then this one is CH3. 2-methyl hex 2 -ene. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. The ene is at the second position, which means it's going to be from here to here. And then the methyl comes up like that. So the full or the expanded would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. He 6 is hex means 6. Um, now, 2 methyl, so I've got to have that one there also have a double bond here, two, um, and now we can go ahead and fill in our hydrogens. One, two, three, four, it already has four. One, two, three, one, two, there we go. Okay, now um, the condensed would be, oh, I'm going to have to do it up here because I'm going to write on my buttons, which wouldn't work. This is CH3, then there's C with a CH3 in parentheses, then there's CH, CH2, oops, nope. CH2 and CH3. Okay. Now for the 2,3-dimethyl pentwonine, I'm going to do line angle first. One, two, three, four, five. Kind of looks like Batman. Double bond on the one and then a methyl here and here. One, two, and three. The complete here, C, C, three, four, five. We've got a methyl on the second one and the third one. We've got our double bond right on the first and now we can fill in one, two, three, four, our hydrogens. One, two, three, and you can kind of see like where this is going. Um, my condensed here would be CH2, then a C with a CH3 in parentheses, then a C with a CH3 in parentheses, 
then a CH2, CH3. Okay? Now, anytime you have a double bond, you can actually have what's called a cis isomer or a trans isomer. Cis isomers, you know, the C kind of means that the, the um, longer chains are on the same side, kind of like a C. Um, trans means they are on opposite sides. And so around this double bond, um, you only have hydrogens and, you know, hydrogen longer chain. There's no cis trans isomer here. But when you have it in the middle, you can have the carbon uh, substituents on the same side or on opposite sides. And those are going to have um, some different types of reactivity. So here, this cis isomer, there's all of this room for somebody to come in and attack that bond. Whereas here, this is blocking and then this is blocking, it's a little bit more stable to be a trans isomer. And so if we're talking about trans to butene, it is going to be um, pretty stable and it's going to be hard to break that double bond. Um, same thing when we're talking about fats, okay? Fats are really long hydrocarbon chains with other things on the end that we get to in a little bit. Um, but if the double bonds are in a trans orientation, um, what will happen is this blocks here, this blocks here. You can't break apart that fat very easily and it tends to be a permanent molecule that you've just eaten. You know, um, whereas the cis, I, the cis fat molecules, like kind of like that, um, you have all of this ability to come in and react across that double bond and you can burn that pretty fast. So why does 3-butene not exist? Go ahead and pause and think about it. This molecule is not 3-butene. It's actually 1-butene. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's on the 1. You don't count from this side. You count from this side that's going to make it the lowest combination. Okay? So this is really 1-butene. Alkynes um, are going to have um, a triple bond. Here the nomenclature is exactly the same. Um, except that now they end in Y and E. You're going to specify the location of a triple bond just like with a double bond. The only difference is, um, you know, now it's the Y and E, okay? So, ooh, that is a typo. This should be propine instead of propene. I'm sorry, guys. Um, but you don't specify the number here because this is a uh, one one doesn't matter. You don't have to specify. Now, in terms of properties, unsaturated hydrocarbons are still nonpolar. They still have low density and low boiling points. It's just that they're going to be slightly more reactive than alkanes because of that pi bond. There's a little bit of um, things that can happen. They're still going to go um, through combustion. Um, they just, they can also have addition. Instead of substitution where you take off a hydrogen, put something else on, what happens is you have this double bond and instead of um, doing, you know, substituting, you break this open and then you'll add in like a chlorine or something across it, okay? Generally, it's going to be either a hydrogen or a halogen that you're going to be adding across. And then um, the other thing that these can go through is polymerization. We're going to talk a lot about polymers in a little bit. Now, if you end up adding a halogen, these are going to be halo hydrocarbons, where you are going to name the halogen substituent as the beginning of the element name and then adding an oro, I mean an O, I'm sorry. So chlorine becomes a chloro substituent. Bromine would be a bromo substituent. So like here, one, two, three, four, five. So this is a pent chain, all single bonds, so it's an ane. And I see bromine, bromine, and iodine. So this is going to be a dibromo, 
and an iota. One, two, three, or one, two, three, four. So it's going to be from this side where we have two iota and a three, three dibromo. Putting these in alphabetical order, this is going to be um, three, three dibromo, two iota pentane. And if you notice, guys, I, in between numbers, there's commas. There should be a dash between the, the number and any letter, okay? That's kind of how I'm trying to do it. And so it would be 3, 3, dibromo, comma, I mean, dash 2, dash, iota, pentane. Now, if we get to something like this, um, draw the structure for... 2, 3, dibromo, 1, chloro, pentane. Or 1, 1, 1, trichloro, 2, 2, 2, trifluoroethane. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and do a line angle, but it doesn't really matter. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2 and 3, bromine and then one chloro pentane. Ethane, that's one carbon, two carbons. This is fluorine, 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 chlorine, chlorine, chlorine. Here we've got two things that we are going to name. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is going to be a hept, all single bond, so it's an ane. Um, 1, 2, 3, I have a 3 methyl. And I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I have 3, 5, dichloro. Putting these all in alphabetical order means that this is going to be 3, 5, dash between number and letter, dichloro, dash to a 3, dash methyl heptane. Here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, that's 4. So it's but, all single bonds, so it's an ane. I have one chloro, one two dibromo. Putting it in alphabetical order, um, B comes before C. So this is going to be one two dibromo dash one chloro butane. Okay? Cyclic hydrocarbons are probably the most fun to say. They have closed ring structures. They can be all single bonds or they can have double or, a, yeah, double bonds. Um, here, it has to be all carbon in the chain for it to count here. Nomenclature is the same way. The only difference is you're going to add a cyclo to the front. So this is one, two, three carbon. So it's prop, all single bonds, ain but because it's a cyclic structure, it's cyclopropane. This is one, two, three, four. So but double bond means ene, all in one circle. So it's going to be cyclobutene. Um, I don't specify the number here because you, you, can't, you start at the double bond. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is hexene because there's a double bond. In a closed structure, it is cyclohexene. Now, because cyclic hydrocarbons are going to pucker a little bit, they could have a chair conformation where, you know, you could kind of like sit here, yay, or a boat conformation, okay? Um, it just gives a little bit of orientation in terms of reactivity. Um, we don't deal too much with that this semester, but if you take organic, you will. So chair and boat orientations are a little bit more important there. 
You can also have polycyclic compounds where you have rings bonded to more rings. And um, especially if you get into steroids and other medical um, things, you can build quite a bit on that. Aromatic hydrocarbons have a network where every other bond is going to be a double bond. Um, now what happens is because this is a double bond, this is double bond, this is double bond, the pi bonds stick above the um, ring and so the electrons will actually circle above the ring structure. And so it's called arom aromatic. These tend to be planar, they're all going to be very flat, and they're very stable. Um, there's only one that I really need you to memorize, and that is benzene. This is not cyclo, um, there we go, this is not cyclohexene, guys. Every other bond is double, this is benzene. Generally, we abbreviate this as, um, as a hexagon with a circle in the middle to indicate the pi structure, okay? So that kind of pulls us to the end of uh, the first part of this unit. Um, we are going to move away from only hydrocarbons into the other type of molecules now.